In this video, I'm going to help you decide which light to use as a key light. I'm also going to tell you at the end which light to avoid using as a key light. Oh, and at the very, very end, I'm going to tell you a little YouTube secret that I stumbled across, and I think you're going to like it. So today I'm going to compare this $419 aperture light to this $200 Amaranth light. But the point of this video is not to sell you on any particular light or on any particular brand. The point is to determine what makes a good key light and what are the five things you should be considering when choosing one. Oh, and then I'm going to tell you that YouTube secret at the very, very end. When I first started making my documentary film Baby Boomerang, it was 1994. But while Baby Boomerang was rewarding, and it did win a number of awards, it was not a cinematic masterpiece. The technology simply wasn't there like it is today. So back then, independent filmmakers usually had one of these Lowell light kits. These were halogen lights, and they were super, super hot. You had to wear gloves when you used them, and they took a lot of power. In fact, um, you had to be careful when you plugged them in because you'd probably blow a circuit if you put too many in the same one. And then it had these scrims that you could put in to kind of cut down the light. And you kind of see how hot they got over time. They gave a good, consistent light. You attached your accessories and had this little thing that would, and then you could put it on. This is what we used. With a new millennium, LEDs arrived. But those early LEDs kind of sucked for the most part. They weren't very bright. They were expensive. Uh, they had this weird color shift. And they came with a fan that you could hear from across the room. But today, LED lights have really come into their own. And now with new companies like Aperture, Nanlite, Godox, these companies are producing lights that are bright, accurate, and quiet. Oh, and the prices are much better as well. First, you're going to want a light that produces a consistent quality white light that has next to no color shift to green or magenta. And here you're going to have to rely on reviewers and experts who talk about things like CRI and TLCI and TGYF or BYOB or whatever they have, you're going to need to uh, get some assurance that this is a good light. And one way to do that is to buy from a recognized brand, such as the ones I spoke about earlier. For me, both of these lights check the box for constant quality light. Second, your key light is going to have to be bright enough to do the job. Now, it might surprise you that you don't need a giant light on a C-stand with one of those big controllers on it to do most jobs like this. If you have one, that's great, but a light like this or this, they'll do the job just fine. Okay, now I've replaced the key light with the Amaran light, and now let's just turn it on. And this is at 30%, and if I turn it up to uh, somewhere around here, around 50%, oh, well, that seems pretty good. So, plenty of light for this scene. Still, you'd never want to be caught with not enough light, and that will happen to you if you're trying to fight the sun or if you have a very large venue. But for small little interview shots like this, this is going to be plenty. All right, now let's try the aperture light. Here it is at 30%, 50, and, well, oh, there's 100. Very similar light. This one is a little brighter, though. Third, you will need to decide what color temperature you want your light to be. Do you want it to be fixed at 5600 Kelvin, or do you want it to be variable? In the aperture and Amaran world, fixed lights have a D after them for daylight. And that's usually 5600 Kelvin. Those with an X after them are bicolored lights. That means they have two types of LEDs in them, some at 2,000, some at 10,000, and then you mix those. Uh, because half of the lights are used sometimes and half of the used the other times, those lights aren't going to be quite as bright as the daylight, but they are going to be a lot more versatile, and they usually cost you around $40 to $50 more per light. So if you're looking for the brightest light out of your key light, then get the daylight brand and then adjust all your other lights to it. But for me, I always go with the bicolored light. I love being able to adjust the color temperature and it's not that much dimmer. Next, you're gonna to wanna to consider build quality. These aperture lights are made of metal and they're made to move around. And the yoke on here is very strong and it's really nice to work with. In contrast, these budget lights are made of plastic and they're a little bit fiddly. And there isn't a yoke, there's just a quarter twenty thread on the bottom. 
Now, if you're just going to put this up once in your studio and then have that as your light, I actually prefer that. In my studio, I use the budget Amaran 100Xs, and I love them. They're bright enough, and even though they're made of plastic, I set them up once, and they rarely get moved. It would have been a waste of money to put in more durable lights. Now, the Aperture light comes with this really great case, and in there it has a number of things, including a bones mount adapter, plate to add consumer batteries to it, decap table. Oh, and it comes with these great barn doors as well. In contrast, this Amaran light comes with this really funky case that's form-fitted to everything you need in here, but you can't actually fit anything back in once you've taken them out. It is a useless case. It also comes with this, which is... Um, made of plastic. In short, you're gonna to have to decide whether build quality and a great case is important to you. I actually do a little of both. I have two of these LS60s that I carry to all my jobs, and then I have a couple uh, Amaran lights uh, in the car in case I need them. Next, you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself whether or not you want a battery solution, and both this light and the Amaran light come with a plate that allows you to put on consumer batteries. Now this is fantastic for run and gun filmmaking because if you're setting up a scene over here, a scene over here, a scene over here, that's just one more thing you don't have to do. But it is a lot of batteries and you've got to keep them charged. And I will tell you, I was going to show these off here, but well, they ran out before we got this far. So always keep a cord handy. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to tell you about a light to avoid as your key light. It's not the final secret at the very, very end. That's something else. The light that I think you should avoid is a panel light. Now, panel light is very tempting because it seems like it's a soft light and it's all in one and you just kind of put it up there. And while I love this Amaran P60C as a background light, it really isn't that great as a key light. What makes a light soft is when it comes at you from different angles, from a large source. And the larger the source, well, the softer the light. Now you can add this little diffuser in front of it, but still, this isn't very big. You're going to want a much larger softbox than this for your key light. A single chip light can be put in a large softbox and make a very soft light, but can also be used as a directional light and create harsh shadows. It's pretty much what you want in a key light. Now, the biggest reason that I chose the Aperture LS60 is it could be used with the Spotlight Mini. And I did an entire video about how cool this light is right over here. So just click on the link and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, are they gone? Thanks for waiting to the very, very end. And now for the YouTube secret. So when you upload a video to YouTube, you can't add any more video to it but you can make cuts to it. So I haven't actually finished the review of the Spotlight Mini, but what I did instead was I pretended that I did finish it, and then I gave you this little secret here. And when I get it finished, I will be able to cut out this end section and all the little parts along the way where I promised you that I would give you the secret at the end. And then after I make those edits, a person who comes in and watches the movie will never know that these secrets even existed. And when they get to the final screen, they will just simply get a link to the Spotlight Mini Review. And they'll never know. How do I know this works? I've done it a number of times. Well, what do you think? Leave a comment and hit the like button if you would. That would be great. If you're a filmmaker who wants to tell better stories through film, I would love it if you would subscribe. I'm looking for my people, and maybe you're one of those people.